Wii Sports was an unmitigated sensation when it launched with the Wii. Packed in with the system in the US, it single-handedly turned motion controls into the next big thing. Nursing homes roared, families gathered, and despite the fact that most of its content was vapid, it became one of the most popular games of the last decade. Looking to take a similar approach with its new Wii U console, Nintendo has delivered the minigame collection Nintendo Land for launch. Showing off a lot of the system's core functionality, is it a quality release in its own right, or just a harbinger of things to come? Most minigame compilations end up resorting to a menu screen to dash you out to each event, and while you can choose to use that interface in Nintendo Land, there's also a much more elaborate gateway in the form of the plaza. It begins as a blank canvas, but over time it fills with the spoils of your triumphs and social interactions. There are gates to each attraction around the perimeter, and a tower in the center where you can spend coins that you earn to play a pachinko game. Succeed and item boxes will erupt from it that hide fun gizmos and gadgets to populate the expanse. From Samus's ship to a Pikmin boss and everything in between, they all have their own animations and serve as nice markers of your progress. Boring. There are 12 total attractions, and all of them have some kind of a tie-in to a Nintendo property, some more obscure than others. All of them can be unlocked from the beginning, with just six for solo play, three that can be played cooperatively and competitively, and three that purely feature one side against another. There are trophies to earn for top scores, and stamps that act as in-game achievements for completing specific objectives. Both motivate to perfect technique. <laughs> Most of the single player options are built on extremely simple concepts, and you'll be able to work your way through them in a night or two. The rest include multiple variants to give them some staying power, but they still feel like snack food. Immediately satisfying, but not particularly filling. <laughs> initially feels a bit foreign. It takes a while to intuitively use both displays, the gyro, the mic, and the touchscreen at once, but Nintendo Land is a great way to get over the hump, and it does a great job of demonstrating the flexibility of the Wii U. Some of the attractions are frivolous and flimsy, like Ninja Castle, where you fling stars at the buggers using the touchscreen on the gamepad. The Simon Says inspired octopus dance is the worst offender, as it uses very little of the system's capabilities. Yoshi's Fruit Cart tests your sense of space as you attempt to draw the cart's path on the touchscreen so that it avoids obstacles that can only be seen on the television. It's sneaky addictive. Donkey Kong's Crash Course uses the tilt functionality to guide a three-wheeled contraption through a maze of platforms, ramps, and pulleys. It walks a fine line between frustration and fun. Captain Falcon's Twister Race is reminiscent of the old-school handheld racing games, where the track was a loop of paper you had to navigate. For this one, you simply tilt the gamepad on its side and steer using the gyro. It's pretty forgettable. Our favorite of the solo lot is Balloon Trip Breeze, where you use the touchscreen to create wind to navigate your balloon fairing me through obstacles to startlingly realistic effect. Once you get into the multiplayer, you better hope you have a lot of leftover equipment from the Wii. At the very least, you'll need a Wii remote for each of four possible extra players, and many of the games require a nunchuck or Motion Plus. If you don't already have this stuff lying around, Nintendo Land can be a pretty expensive proposition to access its best content. Zelda, Metroid, and Pikmin all show up in truncated versions of their console selves. In Zelda Battle Quest, you can play with sword or bow as you take an on-rails trip through familiar locales. Metroid Blast includes both ship and on-foot variants as you attempt to wipe out waves of enemies. Pikmin Adventure simmers the series down to its core as you're only responsible for vanquishing enemies and collecting nectar to level the little guys up. All three can be played both cooperatively or competitively, and while they pale in comparison to the full games, they still manage to entertain across their increasingly difficult 10 or so levels. <laughs> Two of the multiplayer-focused attractions are twists on hide-and-seek. 
Mario Chase asks one player to hide while everyone else uses color-coded sections of the level to hunt them down. Luigi's Ghost Mansion has one player using the gamepad to grab a hold of opponents as the ghost, while the rest wield flashlights to expose the ghoul and ultimately drain its life. Animal Crossing Sweet Day is the exception, as it asks one side to collect candy while the other tries to stop it. If you decide to play these on your own, the attractions will adapt to keep things interesting. The gameplay in Nintendo Land truly runs the gamut, yet the Wii U comes through with shining colors. Some of the games lack depth, but the asymmetrical multiplayer options inspire communication and a lot of laughs. It's an auspicious tech demo of things to come, but we're hoping that, unlike the Wii, there are still some more tricks up the system's sleeve. With no clear art direction that spans the entire game, Nintendo Land's graphics are all over the place. Garish one minute, and charming the next, it's really a game-by-game -game proposition. The plaza is especially hard on the eyes, looking like an exploded candy store, but then there are nice touches, like the camera on the gamepad sliding in player reactions from time to time. There's nothing here that shows an advanced technical prowess, but its heavy 8-bit aesthetic keeps it from becoming too offensive. Then there's Monita. This guide through the game couldn't be less charming or funny. Press and hold the A button, then move the pointer to look around. Voice acting is kept to a minimum, and like the visuals, the music is hit or miss. You get some classics and some catchy loops, but there are just as many abrasive tracks that sound like they came preloaded on a Casio keyboard in the 80s. <laughs> It's hard to see Nintendo Land becoming anywhere near the sensation that Wii Sports was. It requires too much equipment for the modes that last, and the rest can be quickly milked of their entertainment value. It proves that Nintendo is capable of creating addicting $1 games, but at $60, bucks, it is not priced to sell. As a pack-in for the deluxe version of the console, it is a nice extra that shows what the Wii U is capable of. <laughs> See this and other GT shows and game reviews on the GT Originals iOS app, available now on the App Store.